Hey everybody, Ava here. Today I've got a place for you that I am almost 100% sure you have not seen before. Now this is a wild one. It's a super hostile environment. Really, really raw, really, really rough. There are no roads going in or out. The only way here is by ski plane. But we are in the middle of Antarctica, so it's kind of difficult to get here in the first place. This is the base camp of Mount Vincent, the tallest mountain in Antarctica. This is where you stay if you want to climb that ginormous mountain up there just behind me. So uh, I guess I'm going to give you a tour of this place. But remember, it's very basic and very, very raw. All right, let's get going. I'm Ava and I'm a full-time adventurer. I want to bring you on a journey that's all about being brave, experiencing the world and feeling truly alive. So this is Vincent Base Camp, the starting point for all expeditions to the top of Antarctica's tallest mountain, which is why we're here. This place is very much in the middle of nowhere, hundreds if not thousands of miles from the nearest permanent human settlement. It's currently summertime here with 24 hours of daylight and yet it gets so freaking freezing. Oh, let's talk to Wesley, an experienced mountain guide for the average summer temperature breakdown. I would say the majority of mornings I wake up, it's about 17 below Celsius. Coldest would certainly be up at the summit and uh -huh. then that would certainly be around 35 to 40 below zero without wind chill. And with wind chill, how does that feel? That's dangerously cold. <laughs> like any exposed flesh can get frostbitten in seconds, especially if there's, you know, any wind at all. Yep. One of the days that we were here, the air temperature on the summit was minus 25 degrees Celsius with 50 knot winds, which feels like minus 70 degrees. Cool. Literally cool. Here is just one of the many things about Antarctica. You can't build permanent structures here. So in a camp like this, whatever is here has to be temporary so that you can just take it down, dismantle it and fly it out of the continent. It's a very sensitive environment. But that also means that we are not staying in like a hotel or a B&B or even a building of any kind. Risk day, intense. Even when it's minus 20, minus 30, minus 40 degrees, we stay intense. So, uh, well, let me show you around. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> so I kind of go in through here. This is the hallway or the vestibule as it's professionally known. I can finally take off my glacier glasses. It's just so bright outside. You want to keep them on or you could go snow blind. All right, so this is where I keep my uh, heavy duty mountaineering boots when for the cold days when you're climbing as well as some champagne that we got from the camp managers and this is my little home well it's pretty simple really all it consists of is a couple of mats so this is a foam sleeping mat this is a kind of like blow up sleeping mat uh, because it gets pretty cold from the snow that's just underneath the tent and then a sleeping bag and this is how you can survive in Antarctica this in fact is the world's warmest sleeping bag so it's actually good down to minus 73 degrees Celsius can you imagine that it's very cold but it's a very warm sleeping bag oh, I love it it's like my shelter in this shelter. The trick is to keep almost everything inside of your sleeping bag with you because whatever you keep outside, whether it's electronics or toiletries, anything, even clothes, is almost guaranteed to freeze within less than an hour. So if you want to keep things warm and alive, you do it inside of your sleeping bag. So it gets a little bit crowded in there at night. Out here on the mountain in Antarctica, we practice what's called extreme self-care. And that involves a whole range of things from, you know, hydrating well to wearing your glacier glasses or goggles outside so you don't go snow blind. That's an actual thing here. Like within a couple of hours, you could go snow blind. And it's a very painful condition to like applying sunscreen all the time, even at night. This might be the only place in the world where you have to apply sunscreen at night just to protect you from the super strong UV rays out here. Now I've got one 
one little luxury. This is actually my favorite face cream. It's a Nivea cream, very simple, super greasy. This is what I use to like keep my skin nice. I mean, I don't know if it even works in these conditions. The, the most important thing is this is the only thing that hasn't frozen yet. So that's that. All right, one of the most commonly asked questions that I get about places like this, which I totally understand because it's a tough one, is how on earth do you go to the toilet? <laughs> it's a good question because I don't know about you, but I don't see any toilet facilities around here. And um, you know, when you come out to a place like this, like a base camp in Antarctica, you just kind of get, you gotta get rid of all of your inhibitions, you know? You gotta just go with the flow and make do with what's there. Trust me, you get really, you get used to it very, very quickly. So I'm gonna take you over to, <laughs> to the toilet <laughs> to show you what that looks like. I mean, this toilet has been voted one of the most beautiful toilets in the world. Maybe not the most beautiful toilets in the world, but a toilet that's got one of the most beautiful views in the world. So it's right there behind me. I don't know if you can tell what it is just yet, but let me take you there. Yep, so there's one, two, and three cubicles for, you know, number two needs. And then there's also one, two, three pee holes. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so you kind of like walk in through here. This is like your privacy screen separating you from the rest of the camp, which is only like 10 meters away. This is your view over here. And um, there's two containers here. This is the pee toilet and this is the number two toilet. And um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's pretty self-explanatory from here. So normally there's also toilet paper, but it's kind of frozen over. I mean, it's very cold out here. So everything just kind of freezes eventually or just gets covered by snow. And the toilet paper is no exception, which is why you carry your arm, always. Just a bit rugged, you know? You do pee in a bucket and then you have to empty. Uh, let me show you, should I? I'm just gonna like switch off the camera for the next five minutes. <laughs> Well, there's no running water here or anything like that because everything freezes. So thankfully, hand sanitizer doesn't. And you're gonna take out the bucket to the pee hole, which is right here. I'm telling you, for adventures like this, you just gotta get rid of all your inhibitions. Just go with it. Just go with it. I know it may look really uncomfortable and really inconvenient, but it's fine. You really get used to it very quickly. There is one alternative to peeing in that bucket. You can also pee in a bottle inside your tent and then come and check it out here. Very, very reasonable alternative, especially at night when leaving your tent just feels like a very remote like, impossibility. The way that it works is using this, not just this, but the thing that's inside of it as well. So, as a girl, it's a little bit more difficult to pee on the mountain. It's just, just the way that things are, just the way that it is. But some very, very intelligent person came up with this incredibly smart solution. This is called a shiwi, and it's basically um, something that you use to pee into a bottle quite easily so you don't miss because it's very easy to miss especially when you're in a tent or if it's dark outside so you put the you put the shiwi in here and then you know i mean i'm not gonna show you come on <laughs> just so you know this is how it works <laughs> oh yeah and then i have to take the bottle and throw it into the pee hole again just keeping it clean right a few words about clothes and layers there's a saying, I don't know where, I think a lot of cultures have this saying, that it's not about how cold it is outside, it's about what kind of clothes you're wearing. And this definitely rings true out here when you wake up to minus 30 degrees outside in a tent. In a tent. Not in a house with heating. In a tent. So I'm just going to show you like some of the layers that I'm wearing right now. Shameless plug alert. 
If you want to see the full list of gear that I used on this trip, as well as lots of exclusive content, you can sign up to my Patreon page over on patreon.com slash Eva Zubek. I know I look very casual, but one pair of trousers. These are not super heavy duty, but they are fleece lined, so they're kind of warm. Heavy duty leggings underneath and thermal long johns underneath that and actual thermal underwear. Now, when I go to sleep, what I do in addition to all of this, because it gets really freezing out here, is I put on these. A big, puffy pants. And then you take this, and then you've got a couple of layers on here, so one, two, probably like a third kind of jumper, and a big puffy down jacket, okay, and you just slide into bed, you just slide into the world's warmest sleeping bag wearing a million layers of down, <laughs> and this is how you get to sleep, and eventually in the middle of the night you'll get woken up sweating <laughs> because you're wearing a ridiculous amount of clothes and you have to take some of them off but this actually makes it possible to sleep out here in conditions like this trust me I also didn't believe it it's possible oh yeah and there's the hat but the hat just stays on forever just stays on forever I mean there's no way to like wash your hair or do anything like that so it just stays on convenient warm all good we don't worry about personal hygiene too much around here. That's just no choice. Like wet wipes or nothing. But even wet wipes freeze. <laughs> like immediately. Okay, so those were the tents. But let me show you our communal area, which is this beautiful bubble tent over there. Garrett, this is the height of luxury. <laughs> Out here in Antarctica, a place like this, a dome tent where it's warm inside and there's Plenty of food. Oh my God. What are you doing right here, Teray? Just gathering <laughs> snow for water. So how much water is all this snow gonna yield, do you think? Oh, it'll yield uh, some liters, for sure. It's only after you've melted two sled loads of snow that you can begin to cook anything. Let's just say that this process takes an ordinary cup of coffee to a whole new level. Hot French press coffee in Antarctica. This is life. In fact, everything, and I mean everything, is just that little bit more difficult in Antarctica. That is not tomato juice, that is not hot sauce, those are bottled eggs that we're trying to unfreeze right now. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> We've got literally well, five star yeah, service yeah, yeah, up yeah, here yeah, with yeah. Pancakes! Pancakes! In the middle of Antarctica! Oh, oh yes, thank you. Check this out. Oh, two! Strawberries, hazelnut bread, pancakes. We got a Declan in our family. Yeah. It's so decadent. No, Never in a million years as long as you're expected this. Trey is the resident chef here <laughs> and has been spoiling us completely. Uh, so Tere, where does your name come from? It's kind of unusual. Oh, so I'm named after Lionel Tere, who is a very famous French climber. My dad named me after him because my dad is a climber as well. He cut his teeth in the mountains in a famous little American mountaineering school in Lausanne, Switzerland. Uh-huh. And I heard that your dad was basically like James Bond. Is that true? Yeah, he did, he did stunts for two James Bond movies. The opening stunt in The Spy Who Loved Me, where he parachuted off a cliff in uh, Baffin Island, uh -huh. Asgard. And his name's Rick Sylvester. No running water, no luxury amenities, no permanent structures, in fact, out here. So you might be wondering, what about power? How do you get electricity? these guys. So since it's 24-7 daylight here in Antarctica, solar panels actually work really, really well. And besides that, you know, there's not that much to do around here. Like, there's no internet or anything like that. So it's not like you really need that much power. You don't need electricity to power like TVs. You don't need electricity to power a computer because you'd never bring one up here. You don't need electricity to power up that much of your phone. You know, so it actually works out pretty well. So you might wonder, what do you guys do for fun out here? 
fun. It's a, it's a relative concept. Okay, there's certain amenities that are most definitely missing out here and certain luxuries, oh, <laughs> but certain luxuries that you do get. So this champagne is actually given to all the people that come down from the mountain who have summited and, uh, well, one of the finer luxuries that you could find in Antarctica. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> This is Jake here. Jake is part of our climbing team up to Mount Vincent over there. You can see it, right? So would you rather spend the rest of your days out here or in the Sahara Desert? Probably here. It's really beautiful and you can always put on more layers. What's it been like in general for you? How does it feel to be like in such a remote, hostile place at the end of the world? Yeah, it's pretty great and actually it doesn't feel that crazy. But you have to remind yourself that it is very remote, that if something goes wrong, you're very, very, very far away from help. And it's also like a place where it's easy to like, you know, you start to get a little bit cold, you get a little bit of frostbite, you get a little bit of hypothermia, it can start to spiral quickly. So you have to kind of stay on top of making sure that you're aware of how you're doing. How much would someone have to pay you for you to stay here for a month, just here? I mean, it's honestly, it's so beautiful. You doing it for free? I might do it for free. <laughs> but I might need, just work-wise, I might need some connectivity. <laughs> So here's one of the most amazing logistical challenges that comes with running a base like this in Antarctica, high up on a mountain, is you have to get everything off of it. So anything that comes in has to leave. Things like trash, human waste, all that kind of thing actually has to make it all the way back to Chile. Not, it's not dumped anywhere in Antarctica. It's actually taken all the way to South America and disposed of there, which if you think about it, is a lot of stuff. Bye! All right, and they are off. And now we are here alone attempting to climb the tallest mountain in Antarctica, Mount Vincent, just over there you can see the peak far in the background and hopefully when we get down one of these planes will come back for us, hopefully, if the weather's good, you never know in Antarctica. All right, I'll see you in the next episode for the big climb. And there's a twist. What was meant to be a pretty straightforward three-day climb turned into a week-long ordeal with storms battering our camp and blowing our tents off the side of the mountain. You definitely don't want to miss the next episode. See you next Friday. <laughs>